everyone, I'm Issa of Hope Cosplay and today I'm super excited. As you can see, I am celebrating my fifth year in cosplay. I started in November 2014 and ever since then, I've never looked back. Today I'm really excited. I get to answer all your questions about my experiences in cosplay, being a cosplayer and how I deal with the community and also how I manage my everyday life with this amazing, amazing hobby. If you're new to my channel, I am a costume designer and cosplayer. I post a lot of tutorials, work in progress on different projects I'm working on. Definitely check out my YouTube channel. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm so excited to announce that I'm opening my merch store finally. I have some exclusive designs and I'm doing a lot of stationery, stickers. I'll eventually add prints to my store, but definitely check out my store. I got my Halloween Morgan up, as well as my version of Lady Pennywise. I'm so happy and, and just honored how many people left me questions for this video. Um, I posted on Insta and Facebook asking, what did you guys wanna know about my experiences in cosplay? Um, the first question is from Adrian, he asks, what made you go into cosplay? I actually fell into cosplay by accident um, about in 2014, around the summertime. Uh, some of my friends, I'm gonna shout them out, the Not So Serious show, uh, invited me to my first Supercon. I had never been to a Comic-Con before, so it was a really, really interesting experience. When I arrived, I looked around and just saw all these amazing costumes and I'm like, why am I not doing this? I've always been such a fan of Halloween. I felt like it was the only day in the year that I felt like I was really myself and I got to really explore myself, my creative side and really just go all out. So the fact that there's an actual community where I could be doing costumes year round just really, really surprised me. And ever since, I've never looked back. My next question is from Cosplay Kev. This question is, how much is too much? And my answer to that, it depends. I know you said there's only one correct answer. If too much you mean in being extra, I'm all down for that. Uh, what is extra exactly? It's just putting that extra oomph into your costume. Having that super elaborate lace front, just really going in with the accessories because you can never have enough accessories. I am such a detail whore. Yes, a detail whore. I love details. I love that all over my costume that there's eye candy everywhere. So I live from that motto of extraness. But when, when is too much too much? I think it's when you overextend yourself, that you give yourself too many tasks, you succumb yourself to con crunch, and that's never fun. Like cosplay should be fun. It is a hobby that we have the honor to participate in, and if it is stressing you out, that's a time for you to just chill. Just take some time out for yourself because it's not that serious. You know, this ain't brain surgery. You know, take your time, pace yourself. I've learned that. It's not about building the biggest cosplay every time. It's not about building 10 cosplays for a con. Just do what you love and really manage your time and your money. Because at the end of the day, you know, you still gotta pay rent. And if you have other responsibilities, you need to take that. Cosplay can't be everything. My next question is from Parasol Matt and Evilly Wicked on Instagram. They ask, how do you stay motivated and not give up? Well, it's it's actually quite easy for me to stay. It's actually quite easy for me to stay motivated because I am so passionate about costume making that each project just literally gives me so much excitement and so much joy. Um, I think it could be there's moments, you know, it could be daunting. Maybe you don't have as much time to finish or you feel pressure of everyday life. And that actually makes you not feel like working. Cause I know me, the way my focus is, I can only focus on one thing at a time. So if something in my, in my actual personal life is happening, if I can understand why it's very hard to focus on cosplay. But my tips for just keeping motivated is to actually have a timeline, have, perhaps actually a finish line, like a time you need this cosplay to be done. Like deadlines are so important in finishing anything. Before I actually gave myself deadlines, 
I would never finish anything. So that's my t number one tip. Have deadlines for your cosplays. My next question is from Miss Hermit Crab on Instagram. She asks, what if something is more difficult than you originally thought? You know, I think when I go into a project, I really, the big thing about me is I plan and I plan everything out before I order materials and stuff. So I pretty much have an idea of how difficult or easy something is gonna be. I actually mentally prepare myself. A little thing I do is I tend to do easier things first just to get them out of the way and the harder things I leave last. So then I focus most of my time on those things and never be afraid to ask people who might have done something similar to what you're trying to work on and hopefully get tips and help you along the way. My next question is from lady underscore rain 666 on Instagram. She asks, how do you stop yourself from comparing yourself to other people, especially if you think they're better than you? Um, I think that's a really, really, really bad habit. Everyone has, you know, even I've done it, you know, and that's like the guaranteed way to feel like crap. And who wants to do that? I would say, you know, don't look at other people's journey and try to compare it to yourself. What they do is separate from you. The world is abundant. There's abundant opportunities. There's abundant ways to just put yourself out there. You know, they're gonna be always gonna be people who are for you. So you gotta focus on the people who are for you. Focus on your own journey, your own purpose, your own growth. And from there, you're gonna be personally happier and feel a lot more fulfilled and motivated. My next question is from Precious Little Monster on Instagram. He asks, how do I feel to have such a large group of people who love and support me? I feel very honored. You know, when I got into cosplay, I, before I got into cosplay actually, I felt very alone. You know, I felt very like, like out, like outcast, even though it might have not seemed that on the outside, cause I was very, you know, I've always been very good socially and I've always known how to adapt around different people, but I felt like I wasn't genuinely myself that I was almost putting an act, like an act to be normal, to be like the everyday person, just go to that nine to five, and come home, drink water, you know, like the average, I guess, adult life. And I just was like very bored. I was really, I just felt very disconnected from the people that I was surrounded with. It's until I got into cosplay, did I find people who I generally connected to had actually similar interests and to be around so many artistic, creative people inspire me to continue doing what I'm doing. So I'm very honored and I love you guys. You really are the reason, actually the surprise, surprise, you know, kind of consequence of me entering cosplay. I never thought by doing cosplay, I would have met my best friends, my husband, like, and this just big community that supports me. That actually was a really pleasant surprise and I'm really honored and blessed to have you all in my life. My next question is from Tech and Darren Cosplay from Instagram. He asks, how has cosplay changed for you from when you started to now? I would say um, when I started cosplay, I just wanted to make costumes. I never thought I was gonna actually be wearing the costumes and promoting myself or becoming a content creator. That, I didn't even know that there was an actual community for this. So that actually shocked me and that the fact that people are thriving in cosplay and I never thought I would be able to get like companies to sponsor me and hire me for different projects, just doing something that I naturally love and was just doing it for fun. That actually surprised me from when I started to now, that the opportunities are abundant and I can only grow from now. Question is from Elkelson23 from Instagram. They ask, what is your biggest thing you've seen change in cosplay over the last five years? Uh, the biggest change I've seen from five years ago is just the level of talent. It's insane, like how people have leveled up. Like they're definitely, you know, at the point of just studio quality. Just like these people just enter into cosplay and they're creating these giant builds, these elaborate builds. You're seeing an animatronics, you're seeing smoke, you're seeing LEDs. These are like movie ready costumes. 
like back in the day costumes were cute but now it's like bro like it's even overwhelming to me you know i've stopped competing because i don't know what to create for competition anymore because people could just keep like raising the bar of what a costume can be and that actually is exciting and i'm actually so happy to see these new creators come in just creating amazing work it really just like really makes you expand your horizon on what cosplay can be my next question is from my child cc on instagram she asks what is my most wholesome experience in cosplay uh, I would say my most wholesome experience is my friends. They are such an amazing support system. I need to shout out Sierra and Marilyn. Um, they, they will cheer you so hard that you will start to blush. That's how amazing and supportive they are. It's insane. Um, every time I'm in costume and my friends are hollering, I get really like shy, but, but I really, really love them and they really make me so happy every time I see them. Now question for Facebook. Have you found a balance with completing your builds, cosplays, and still maintaining regular day-to-day -day life? This is from Tamara. Hi, Tamara. Uh, that was a really good question because I don't have 24 hours a day to make cosplay. I really don't. I am pretty much busy every day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I know that's shocking. Like, then it's like, Isa, when do you have time to play your video games and to make cosplays? Late at night. Literally late at night. I just came off the 31 days of Halloween, which was such a challenge. It was so crazy. I was doing these looks for two months two months especially on my days off i would do them i would also most of my shoots would be at 11 p.m at night it was really really insane but what i found out is if you're really really passionate you will find you will dedicate x amount of hours to what you love and also what i've learned over the years is to be very very efficient to plan out what i'm gonna do this night that night this night you know, with me, because cosplay is my passion, I don't find it like work. I don't find it daunting. It's not a chore. So I actually welcome coming home and get to play with all my costumes and my supplies and play my video games. It actually makes me really, really happy. My next question is from Ty on Facebook. He asks, what advice would you give people who want to get into serious cosplay? Um, I think it depends, like, what do you mean by serious? Do you just want to be, like like what we call hardcore cosplayer, who goes to X amount of cons a year, has like 30 costumes a year. It, it actually depends on the individual. Or do you wanna go into the more professional route? You wanna guest, you wanna sell prints? I think it depends on you. I think it's just sitting around and going, what is it that I exactly want from cosplay? And just going from there, start small. Because I think a lot of people want to rush the process and just go from here to there. And if that's really overwhelming and you will burn yourself out really quickly. So ask yourself, what is it that, what part of coffee do you personally enjoy? And pursue that step by step and actually follow people who might be in the same wavelength as you. My next question is from Alex on Facebook. He asks, how do you, how do you start cosplay? It's actually quite simple. Pick a character that you like. You can either plan on making it, you can either go to online or go to a store or even a thrift store and pick out pieces that you can actually style to look like the character. And don't think you have to do the all full out character first, especially if you're a beginner. You could do kind of like a closet cosplay kind of version of it, like a casual version and just work your way up from it. Start small and just build your way up. And what's great is if you have like a signature character that you really, really like, you can actually just expand on that character every time you wear it, like add more accessories, upgrade it. That's what I do. I have some characters that are my signature, like Laura Matsuda is my signature, Sombra is my signature, Melina, Scarlet. Like I just do a lot of versions of them and it keeps me pretty happy. And what's great is you get to use a lot of the same accessories, wigs and makeup. So there you go. My next question is from Jet Black with a Q-U-E to be exact. From Instagram, he asks, what do you like working with the most? Warbler, craft ball, foam clay? Is, and also, is there 3D printing in your future? I feel like with the different materials in cosplay, whether it be warbler, 
foam clay, EVA foam, etc. It depends on the project that I'm working on, to be honest. Um, I really don't have a preference. Actually, I lie. I do. There is something I really like, and I feel like people sleep on this material, and it is a thermoplastic. I don't know why we as cosplayers don't talk more about polymer clay. Polymer clay is so amazing, especially when making jewelry, accessories, natural gemstones. I'm actually planning in the future to do a Sculpey haul. I was very honored that Sculpey sent me a lot of samples of their different kinds of polymer clay from ultralight to bendable to liquid. So I'm really excited to see what type of things I can do with them for cosplay. As for 3D printing, I am obsessed. It is really amazing how cost efficient 3D printing is. It saves you time, it saves you money. With a roll, a $20 roll of filament, you can print so many items. I would say hundreds of dollars of items that if you were to purchase these pieces piece by piece, or if you were to make them in other materials such as Warbler, it would be three, four times more expensive. So I'm really, really delving more into 3D printing. I dabbled a little in my last project with Jade. I, I 3D printed her razor, like her razor prop. And I also 3D printed the buckles on her belt. It, and it was just really eye opening. And I also used it, I also printed her mask. Uh, I'm looking to upgrade my 3D printing unit so I can use it for more things in the future. My next question is, again from Tamara from Facebook, she asks, how do you decide how to create some of your more complicated builds and what cosplays have you and your husband done? How do I, like how to create them? Again, it's all about planning. My number one thing is finding as much resource photos of the character that I'm cosplaying. I try to get the front, the back, close up of the accessories, so important. And I make it into separate lists. So if it's elaborate jumpsuit, I will make one list the jumpsuit. Another one, if the person has a headpiece, I will have a separate list for the headpiece, a separate list for the boots. I try to really categorize it and work on each piece individually because if you look at it as a whole it's going to overwhelm you so the best way is to work piece by piece um me and my husband what's i'm so happy to find someone who's into coffee like me and and not only do we have this in common we get to work together sometimes he helps me because sometimes i'm so behind he'll help me prime things he'll help me paint things just so i can get things done quicker because i'm like doing a hundred things at the same time um our next few projects that we have planned as if you could tell i'm well not today but if you follow me on instagram and facebook or twitter you could tell i'm very obsessed with mortal kombat obsessed i am like such a fighting game junkie i love it love it love it and the new designs just really 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 uh fucking love them i love the new design so much there's so much detail and i told you i'm a detail whore and i love gore so there's that so we are going to be focusing we're going to be working on two cosplays together upcoming which will be i'll be doing sandel i'm wait, actually waiting for the new skins to drop so i can see which one i want to do and he will be doing one of the cabal skins which is going to be a lot of work i'm going to actually be documenting work in progress is from now on. I wanted to, as in my new content for this channel, as well as my Instagram and Facebook, I'm really going to go into documenting how I make a costume from start to finish. And maybe that'll help you see how I do tackle more complicated builds. Next question is from KV0513 from Instagram. She asked, what is the most difficult cosplay you've ever done? I've done a few complicated cosplays, but the one I felt was the most difficult for my skill level at that time was in 2015 when I tackled the Kai Arts Harley Quinn. That had so many diamond shapes that I did not want to cut a diamond shape ever for the rest of my life. That's how many diamond shapes. You see a project like that, if now if I, from what I know now, from what I didn't know then, I would have 3D, 3D print a lot of those pieces because it was not only meticulous, it, it was just like, oh, like every piece was so detailed that 
nothing was easy. Nothing was like, oh, I'm gonna do the easy things first. No, everything was complicated. Everything was detailed. And I'm actually really proud of it. I have not found a big build in a long time that I've actually wanted to do. Cause I don't, like I appreciate the aesthetic of really big armor and super elaborate, like the Monster Hunters, the, Le the um, World of Warcraft um, kind of skins. I love it, it's beautiful. But for me as a designer and as an artist, it's not necessarily stuff I like to work with. I like things that are a little bit more sleek, a little bit more fashion inspired. So I wish, I hope to find something that's like at that scale to do at my current skill level now and see how I would tackle it now. My next question is, from KV0513 again. She asks, what are your go-to stores for cosplay? I am all about finding exactly what I need at a, a, at a good price. You know, sometimes it's gonna be more expensive. You know, it's not always gonna be affordable, but you want it to be as cost efficient as possible, it being exactly what you need. Uh, my go-to is, of course, Joann's. Joann's has like a really good fabric selection. They also sell um, notions, um, bu buttons, zippers, like just the little essentials you need to make, you know, costumes, of course. Uh, my other go-tos are any craft shop, Hobby Lobby, Michaels. I also go online, Amazon and eBay as well. I go everywhere to find exactly what I need. Cause when I have a picture and I see I need like a specific fabric in a specific color, I will literally look all over the internet to find exactly what I need. My next question is from Cosplay Bruja underscore 305 represent. She asks, if you're on an island, what two, what two cosplays would you have with you? Well, if I was deserted on an island, I don't know how much, how cosplays would actually help me, you know? I think maybe more the materials, maybe like some good old scissors, wire cutters, rope, you know, I think that might work more in my favor. My next question is from Ryan on Facebook. He asks, if you can instantly gain the powers and abilities of the character you cosplay, who would be your choice? Wow, that's actually a really, really good question. Uh, I think I would be Sindel so I could whip my hair back and forth and like just whip a bitch in the face and get her out the way. <laughs> I'm just, I'm playing. I'm playing. Um, man, that is a really good question. I maybe Sombra because I could just hack systems. You know, maybe hack the soda machine, get unlimited refills. I don't know. My next question is from Patrick. He asked, how do you alleviate, alleviate, I think that's how it's pronounced, I'm sorry. Alleviate heat exhaustion while waiting, wearing a helmet for a prolonged period. Um, you know something? Just take the helmet off. Uh, I hate mask and helmet because they trap so much heat. And it's kind of, it comes with the territory. You just gotta suck it up you know um the best thing to tell you is try to keep yourself in like an air ventilated room make sure that you know you have enough that you don't overheat make sure that you drink water because i've seen a lot of cosplayers pass out at cons because they get really really dehydrated and know when to take breaks if you can only take so long in a costume, take it off, take a break, have a snack. Um, that's the best tips I can give you. And other tips, um, especially me who wears like a lot of like vinyl, it makes me sweat like a pig. And you don't want to be that person who has like that game room stench. You you don't want to be that person. So what I like to do is like I like to spray um, deodorant all over me, and that actually helps me keep me cool and smell nice as well. Now a question from Jonathan on Facebook. He asks, what is your favorite cosplay you've created? My favorite cosplay, man, that's really hard. Cause I have, so, I've 
came in so many costumes and I love them for so many reasons. Like each cosplay is like a child. I, it's even hard for me to give it away or sell them because I get like so attached to the pieces I create. Um, I would think my favorite, I've been really loving my current Mortal Kombat cosplays that I've been making. Like I made two versions of Scarlet. I made John, Johnny Cage, I did Shang Tsung, I did Jade, I can't wait to star in Sindel. I've been really loving all the Mortal Kombat costumes, I love the details, I think it shows where I've come as a seamstress, as well as just costume maker all around. I think it really, really, really shows my progress as an overall designer. Patrick also asked, what's your favorite Mortal Kombat character? Melina. Melina is my bitch. That's my girl. That is my home girl. And people always ask me, Isa, when are you gonna come to Katana? I won't. I won't, because I'm loyal. I'm loyal. That's why. Next question. I am so sorry if I didn't get your name. The thing about like these online polls, they like completely disappear in 24 hours. So I, I was able to see the question, but I couldn't see who actually s said it. So like let me know if it was you and I'll definitely shout you out in the future. This person's question was, who wouldn't you cosplay? Oh, I think I covered it, Only Katana. Katana's beautiful, but I won't cosplay her because I have loyalty to Melina. Um, and also, I won't cosplay anything from My Hero Academia. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's, I don't hate it. I just won't wear it. That's, that's pretty much it, I just won't wear it. Thank you everyone for joining me today with this Q&A, celebrating my five year anniversary in cosplay. Please, if you like my content, please subscribe to my channel, hit like on this video and leave me a comment, you know, if what you want to see me do next. And if you love coffee tutorials, you love work in progress, or you want to see the project I'm currently working on, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you so much. I love you all and have a wonderful day.